welcome back everyone so in this video we will be discussing about the third problem of today's weekly contest the problem states that we are given a array and we need to find the number of subarrays or rather the number of distinct subarrays which have at most k elements which are divisible by p so because the constraints of this problem is little low the actual solution of this problem uh, is very easy but we will also look at a slight modification of this problem which make it a little bit uh, more trickier and more harder so stay tuned till the very end of the video so let's start so let's first try to understand the problem so uh, let's say we are given uh, k equals to 2 and p equals to 2 okay so basically we need to find the number of subarrays of this array such that there are at most two element in this subarray which is divisible by 2 okay so uh, for example this is a valid subarray because in this subarray there is only one element which is divisible by 2 and one is less than 2 now similarly uh, this is a valid subarray because again here there are two elements which are divisible by 2 and we can have at most two elements so this is also a valid subarray but this is not a valid subarray because there are three elements which are divisible by 2 and but we want only two of two of them so now how to solve it like let's just think of a very brute force solution so we need to find all the subarrays so that will take order n square time okay and for each subarray we will check whether it is valid or not and if it is valid uh, we will just add it to some kind of set uh so that we can count the number of distinct subarrays so remember like we need to count the number of distinct subarrays so this is a subarray and this is another subarray and this is also a subarray right so this subarray and this subarray is not equal like we, we need to count the number of distinct subarray so that's where we will just add uh, all the valid subarray to a set that will uh require log n time another log n time into n because we need to iterate over all of them so this is the overall time complexity and uh, the only thing that you need to uh, take care of is uh, because this is very huge you can't add an extra uh, multiplier so you can't have 2 into this because that might time out so let's just look at the code so like this as as i said like this is very straight forward like the brute force solution itself would pass so let's say uh, we take a uh, set of uh, all the answers like that and then we will uh, check for each element whether like for, like we are just uh, uh, we are taking all the elements which are we are considering all the subarrays which are ending at j so let's say this is j so we are continuously considering this subarray and this subarray okay so in the first like so what what we are doing is for i equals to uh, j to 0 like basically uh, first take this and then take 3 and 2 and then take 3 2 and whatever is there before so this current contains the current subarray and if nums of i modulus p is 0 basically the current number is divisible by p then we just increment divisible by p plus plus and if this total number of total numbers which are divisible by p in this current is less than equals to k we will this is a valid subarray so we will insert in, into the current otherwise we will just break because if uh, current subarray itself has more than p number of elements more, more than k number of elements which are divisible by p then if you add another element that will also have more than k elements which are divisible by p so just break and return all the sides so this is the solution uh, now let's look at the follow up so we have to like currently uh, we have to find the distinct subarrays right so because we have to find distinct subarrays we can't do much instead of uh, having this set so that's uh that's where like we have to we don't have any choice other than going n cube but let's say instead of uh, counting the distinct subarrays they just want you to count the subarrays 
so for example uh, currently in this case uh, there are these there are two sub arrays which have just three in it so this is one sub array and this is another sub array which has just one three in it so these two sub arrays are counted one in this question but let's say you have to just count you you are free to count twice so uh, that's the problem so let's try to solve that version of problem so we are given let's say this array okay and we have to find the problem is similar we have to find the number of sub array which are like which have at, at max k elements which are divisible by p and uh, we are free to choose like the current definition of sub array is just sub array like not distinct so if you have let's say uh, 12 at the sub array you can have this 12 as as well as a sub array because this is the position of these two 12 are different so it will be counted twice so that's the newer problem let's try to solve this so uh, obviously we have to solve this in less than order n square so because like we, we will try to solve this in less than order n square so i will encourage you to pause the video here and try to think of it uh, try to think of a solution that you can uh, so that you can solve this version of the problem in less than order n square time now let's move ahead so what we we have here is like uh, we like we have to find the number of sub arrays which have at max k elements that are divisible by p so let's just simplify the problem so let's say we just uh, mark elements which are divisible by p as 1 and elements which are not divisible by p as 0 so 12 is divisible by p so let's mark it 1 13 let's mark it 0 uh, 30 is divisible by 2 so mark it 1 and similarly adjust so this we are we will now take this array and now the problem reduced to find the number of sub array whose sum is less than k uh, hope that makes sense so i will repeat uh, we will just we, what we have done is we have reduced like instead of dealing with both uh, k and p variable we have just uh, uh, converted the array into ones and zeros where one denotes the element which are divisible by p and zero denotes the element which are not divisible by p once you have this the problem is now how many sub arrays of this array are there which uh, which have like how many sub array of this array are there whose sum is less than k so if sum is less than k it means there are less than k number of elements that are divisible by k which are divisible by p right so that, that those two problems are similar so let's just try to solve that part so number of sum num, number of sub array uh, with uh, sum less than k or less than equals to k okay so less than equals to k so now uh, as we have discussed we have already modified this into ones and zeros now Again, I would say like we we have a problem of sub array, so we have two variables L and R. So let's try to fix one of them. Let's say you fix uh, R. So what we, what we are saying is let's say the R is this. So what we are saying this is we will consider how many good sub arrays are there out of uh, all the sub arrays which are ending at one. So we will consider like out of these four sub arrays which are ending at one, or rather this one, how many sub arrays are there which are good and definition of good here is uh, the sum should be less than equals to k okay so one one simple solution could be just to iterate over it and find the sum and uh, determine whether it is good or bad so that will again require order and time for each position and it will lead us to order n square time complexity but we have to do better so what like uh, here sub array sum is involved right so whenever you have to find the sum faster uh, you can calculate prefix sums okay now let's just see what is the uh, sub array sum of i and j if you have prefix sum so we have, we have to find the sub array sum of i comma j, uh, from starting at uh, i and ending at j let's say and so what will be the sum sum will be prefix of j minus prefix of i minus 1 and this sum should be less than or equals to k like uh, just assume less than uh, less than equals to k is also very similar so now just bring this here and just bring this this one here 
and let's bring this to the right side. You will get prefix of j minus k less than prefix of i minus 1. And just uh, reverting the orders, you will get prefix of i minus 1 should be greater than prefix of j minus k. So what we are saying is uh, for j, for j, all the prefixes which are greater than prefix of j minus k are valid. Right? That's what, that, that's what we are saying. So let's say our k is 2. Okay, and we are trying to find the answer for this index. This is our j. So what we are saying is uh, all the i which have uh, prefix of which have value greater than prefix of j minus k. The prefix of j is three, so three minus uh, k, which is two. So all the values which are greater than one will be valid. So basically, this is valid subarray. This is also valid subarray. Uh, and so this this two are the values of array if we, if we consider uh, grid, uh, less than k but if we consider equals to as well uh, then this will be like less than equals to k so basically this is again a valid subarray notice that we will not count this one because uh, this like subarray prefix like prefix of uh, j minus prefix of i so this is the, the we have to find i minus 1 right prefix of i minus 1 should be greater so prefix of i minus 1 is 0 here so prefix of i minus 1 is 0 here so that's where like this subarray is good this is good because prefix of i minus 1 is 1 similarly this is good prefix of i minus 1 is 1 but this is not good okay so we need to find uh, prefix like we, we need to find position i for which this is true so now we will just uh, like this this kind of equation always leads us to uh, binary search because here prefix like prefix array is always strictly increasing given all the numbers in the uh, original array is greater than 0 okay so in our case it is true like greater than or equals to 0 so in our case it is true because uh, our array is always 1 and 0, one, 1 and 0, so uh, prefix sum array will be increasing. It is not strictly increasing, but it is increasing. So because it is increasing, you can directly apply binary search and you can just find the first element which is less than this. So we, we have just found the first element which is less than this is this, right? So we will just subtract the index of this with the index of this. So index of this is 0 and index of this is 3. So 3 minus 0, 3. So there are total three subarrays which are possible, which are ending at here and are good. So good means their their sum is less than equals to k. So we can verify as well. So this is one subarray which is which whose sum is one. This is another subarray which whose sum is two. This is another subarray whose sum is again two. So these three are valid subarray. But if we consider this, the sum will be three and that will not be valid. So hope you get the intuition what you are what we are doing. Just to reiterate, what we have done is uh, we have converted our original array to zeros and ones, uh, where zero denotes the like if the integer at that position is not divisible by p, we will just mark it as zero. Otherwise, we will mark it as one. After doing this, we have reduced our problem to finding number of subarrays whose sum is less than or equals to k. So how we have solved that part? Uh, we have just said like because it is a subarray sum problem, let's just try to uh, fix the one one position of uh, the array. So prefix of R. So we we fix we fixed the right position, and then we try to find uh, the equation using the simple formula. Like basically, what we want is prefix of this is prefix of J minus prefix of i minus 1 should be less than or equals to k and uh, what what we have said is we just uh, move this around a little bit and after moving it around we get prefix of i minus 1 should be greater than or equals to prefix of j minus k with this equation we come to know that for j all the i which have value greater than prefix of j minus k are valid so we just for each index we will just find we will just find prefix of j minus k which is in this case 
if j is this this is 1 and all the i which are greater than 1 is valid now how to find all the i which are greater than 1 we have applied binary search for it because we are saying the array is increasing so once there is an index whose value is greater than uh, this prefix of j minus k in this case 1 then all the index after that would would have value greater than 1 so that's where we just use binary search and find the first index or basically upper bound uh, where this is uh, the where the value is uh, equals to prefix of j minus k and once we have found that we will just subtract those indexes and get the count so the let's look at the code so code is very simple as we have said we have just find first the prefix sum so prefix sum is prefix of j minus 1 plus 1 will be like we will just add 1 if nums of j minus 1 modulus p is 0 otherwise that position will be 0 so we will not add anything now after that like this set is not like this set was required to solve the original problem but if let's say we are not solving the original problem we can just uh, remove these parts and now as discussed we will find prefix of j minus k like uh, in this equation if you remember prefix of j minus k and uh, then we will just find the first index which have value equals to this so this will become this will be lower bound and once we found the first value which is the, which is equals to this we can just subtract these two indexes and add it to the answer so this will be our count in case duplicates are allowed so in case we are able to uh, like here this uh, this three and these three are one subarray but if these three and these three are two subarrays then this would have been the solution and the complexity for that would be order of n log n like we are uh, you can see we are only doing a binary search inside the loop so this is the loop and we are only doing the binary search inside it so but uh, unfortunately or fortunately i'm not sure how why they give uh, these small constraints and want us to apply a brute force solution so anyways hope you enjoy the solution if you like the video give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so that it can reach to maximum people and do let me know if you have any doubts uh, or suggestions for the future video as well and i will see you in the next video thank you